What game is so lazy it asks people to make the game for them? What game doesn't ask you to do anything but just look at it for 50 hours? Whether it's developer laziness or player laziness, here are 15 of the laziest games ever made. I'm Danger Dolan, and today I will be your narrator. Number 15. Castlevania Lords of Shadow. It's not so much that Lords of Shadow was bad, it's, it's you know, decent game with some cool moments. It's just that it was a lot more fun when it was called God of War and Shadow of the Colossus. The action sequences have you using a chain-like weapon to beat up enemies, the bosses have to be climbed on so you can stab them in a specific spot. Both are good gameplay mechanics, but this game lifted both of them from better games. And as a personal nerd, I was really disappointed with it too. I, I just want to play Castlevania, not this crap. Number 14. Big Rigs Over the Road Racing. This is the video game equivalent of starting a novel, finishing the first and last chapters, and then putting it on sale with 300 blank pages in the middle. Big Rigs is the very definition of an unfinished game. There's no music. None of the objects have any collision, including the bridges. The physics are nonsensical. The game tells you that you won, even though you obviously came in last place. It doesn't even do that right. It tells you you are a winner. They couldn't even be bothered to spell check that. <laughs> Number 13. Superman 64. This game took two years to make, including a six month delay for polish. What were they doing with that time? In fairness, it seems like a smaller game than it actually is because almost nobody has stuck with it long enough to get past, you know, generally the first level where Superman flies through rings to fight Lex Luthor somehow. Number 12. Tiger Electronics LCD Games. In the 1990s, it wasn't unusual to find a bunch of little LCD games in your local store for 20 bucks that have names, you know, like Sonic the Hedgehog, Star Wars, Spider-Man. Tiger were able to get a lot of licenses for things that made their games sound cool, but the games themselves were just so lazy. They were just like a slideshow. There was so little to these games, you could actually see every single frame the game had to offer just by turning it on. Maybe some of you guys have nostalgia for it. That's cool too, I guess. Number 11. The CDI Zelda games. The lazy thing about these isn't the awful design, the unresponsive controls, the horrifically animated cutscenes that are basically living memes, or the even worse live action cutscenes. In some ways, they tried to make these games decent, despite obviously knowing nothing about game design. The animation took a lot of work, even if it does look horrific. What's lazy is the total lack of regard for the Zelda franchise. Philips had the most reviewed game franchise in the world right in their hands, and they made red rupees equal one rupee. Even the most basic of series staples and the details were just ignored entirely. Number 10. Final Fantasy All the Bravest. In this game, you enlist the help of 32 random heroes to line up and do an attack. That is literally the whole game. There's no gameplay, there's no strategy. Just some grinding and battles where you just tap a hero and make them attack. Even white mages are just, just attack. It's barely a game at all. It's obviously just a ploy to extract money from you. You want actual Final Fantasy characters that you know? 99 cents for just a random one. You don't want to wait hours for your party to heal? Money. New missions? Money. Number nine. Pac-Man for the 2600, any cheap cash-in of a beloved title, kinda lazy to start. There's also the fact that they use the same line graphic for both the dots and the stage walls. The walls are just two dots stacked on top of each other. Then they tried to play it off like it was intentional. No, they are dots and power pellets. Now they're vitamins and video wafers. That's the name they came up with to make this seem okay. Video wafers. Good thing they only manufactured 12 million of these to sell to 10 million idiot 2600 earners. Number 8. The Magnavox Odyssey. It's important to video game history and yeah, yeah, it came out in the early 1970s when technology could barely handle it. But we have the benefit of hindsight and the Odyssey displays three dots and a line. That's it. They even had to pack in screen overlays so it actually kind of looked like a game it was supposed to be. Again, you might have nostalgia for this. That's okay too. Number seven. Annual sports franchises. Oh man, sports! These things started in the early 1990s when a new version of professional sports games would come out each year with rosters reflective of the real sports teams. I know this one's going to be divisive because, you know, sports games sell out the arse for consoles and all that, but Jesus Christ, guys. There was an era before the internet and DLC, live updates became a thing. So naturally, these days, nothing at all has changed. They still release a new game, reskinned, every year. It's because games are getting bigger and more difficult to make. It's getting harder to make significant changes between annual versions, so they don't. Number six. Once you get past the initial coolness of using the NES Zapper, you start to think about it. You're just pointing, clicking at a screen, being laughed at by a dog. It's 
That's all a game is. There's nowhere to go from there. Some might say that's lazy. I say that's perfection. Number five. Mountain. This is a game where you watch a mountain drift through space. There are no controls aside from camera movement. It takes 50 hours to get through the full game. Spoilers! The mountain dies. Number four. Naughty Bear puts you in the position of a homicidal maniac stuffed bear who decides he wants to kill every other stuffed bear on Perfection Island because they didn't invite him to a birthday party. So you just sort of run around stabbing bears, setting the same two or three traps. It's a neat, brutal concept that never goes anywhere. Definitely feels like they thought the shock value would really sell the game, so they just s sort of stopped making more game. Number three. Minecraft clones. Now, Minecraft itself looks like a lazy game. There's actually a ton of thought and effort put into it. It did, however, spawn a bunch of goddamn games from people who also thought it looked lazy. So they tried cashing in by putting out the clones that are actually lazy. Many of them add guns and zombies, you know, to make it feel like a real original concept, dude. Number two. Dreeps. In this game, you experience a vast sweeping adventure with epic battles and mysticism. Well, you don't get to go on that adventure. Your job is setting the alarm clock for the guy who gets to do all that stuff. But hey, you can watch him do it. Number one. Weird simulators. Games like Farming Simulator, Train Simulator, they're, they're okay, they're not lazy. They put lots of effort into making actual simulations. But now there's a simulator for everything. We've got Forklift Truck Simulator 2009, Shower With Your Dad Simulator, Rock Simulator, which actually you know, it sounds exactly like that game Mountain. The rest of these games aren't even simulators, it's just a lazy thing to slap simulator on your game, ironically, and expect it to explode in popularity because memes, am I right? So guys, what do you think is the laziest game ever made? Tell us in the comments down below, we'll pin our favourite to the top. This video was made possible by our fans over on Patreon. Thanks for your support, guys. That is it for this countdown, have a good one!